In this video, I'm going to tell you one sneaky kind of covert way that we tend to be, the reason why we tend to be so emotionally charged when it comes to our behaviors with food and why we continue to sabotage our food. This is one really powerful way. Hi, I'm Carrie Nyard. I'm the creator of the Freedom with Body and Food program where I help women stop dieting, stop struggling with food, and just become a normal eater that's able to, with ease, maintain or lose weight wherever is a happy place for their body. Okay, so this is the thing. As a human being, you have needs. There are needs that you have just to survive, just to remain alive. You need air, food, water, okay? There are those needs, but then there are the needs of humanity. There are needs to love and be loved, needs to rest, needs to create, needs for entertainment, needs for connection, needs for belonging, okay? Needs for variety, needs for comfort. These needs, and I call them needs on purpose, are because they are needed for you as a human being to be able to function and thrive and just be here on this earth more than just exist. But in order to feel human, you need to meet, have these needs met. But here's what happens. And women especially do this is that we withhold meeting these needs for ourselves. Maybe we don't put in enough time for, I'm not talking about just self-care though. That is part of it. They don't allow themselves pleasure. They don't allow themselves um, rest. They don't allow themselves entertainment or room to create in their life. And food is always there. And because food is needed for our survival and because food creates pleasure for us, it creates a release of dopamine, a feel-good hormone in our brain that gives us a feeling of well-being, what happens is that when we deny ourselves rest or peace or comfort or um, pleasure or belonging or stability, stability is another need I think I failed to, to, um, to, to comment on. All of these are needs. And when we withhold ourselves from these things, guess what? We're going to find other ways to get these needs met if we are not giving ourselves permission to get them met intentionally. And food oftentimes takes this place because we won't live if we don't eat food. And so because of that, food oftentimes is able to become the object or the medium through which we receive comfort or peace or variety or pleasure or stability. This is how this might show up. And this is, I'm going to talk about you some clients as examples, <laughs> but if you're one of my clients and you think I'm talking about you. I'm actually talking about many clients because this is an overriding theme, especially among women, because we're so self-depriving because we show up as the nurturers and the creators. And also because in our society, there's this belief that if we don't accomplish, then we're not worth much. Our worth is dependent upon what we accomplish. And so if we're constantly striving to get our list done so that we can feel worthy, we will then neglect our human needs being met. For example, say that you tend to binge at the end of a day, or you have a hard time stopping eating at the end of the day. Maybe you eat dinner and then you continue to snack or binge all evening long to the point of feeling sick. It's because the food is providing a need being met and you deserve to have your need being met. So a good question to ask yourself is, what is it that I'm stri striving to feel when I eat this food? One particular um, thing that tends to come up is that women won't take the time to rest. And so at the end of the day, when they're eating, not only are they feeling the pleasure that comes from the dopamine release in their brain, but they're actually giving themselves permission to rest. And so their brain subconsciously has associated the human need of rest being connected with food. If we eat, then we get to rest. So then your brain's going to send you lots of urges to eat food when you're not actually hungry because it's just trying to get your human needs met. Another way that this can show up is if you deprive yourself of pleasure. And I'm, I'm not, I'm talking about any type of pleasure, whatever you enjoy doing. If you do not find time to do those things and you tend to go to food a lot, it's probably because 
you are not getting enough pleasure in your day. So I want you to start to think about this. I, I, I've had other women, especially women who live alone or women who don't have quality connections in their life is when they feel lonely. This oftentimes happens for women when they start to become empty nesters, when the children leave the home, when they're not needed as much, or when they find that they are alone or they live alone, is that when they find themselves at home and there aren't people around, they tend to eat. And why do they tend to eat? Because they're feeling lonely and because they're feeling that, that lack of security that comes from that human connection, Food is always there. So they go to the food to strive to get that need met. But here is the problem with this. Our, the, the problem with this behavior, though it doesn't take away from your worthiness, it's not like you become unworthy or unacceptable if you eat to get one of your human needs met. It's that it never will fully satisfy. It never fully satisfies. So what happens is that women will eat something sweet and then they'll eat something salty and something sweet and then something salty and they'll eat something in the pantry and then think, no, that's not it. And they'll go eat something in the, in the refrigerator and think, no, that's not it because they're chasing an emotion. They're chasing a need being met. And guess what? Food will not meet these human emotions. They will not feel these human needs. Sorry, my camera's a little fuzzy there. So just realize that you have really good reasons for your behaviors with food, even if they're not helping you go where you want to go. The question you need to ask yourself is, what need am I seeking to get filled from this food? And then solve for the need. The food's not the problem once the need is filled. It becomes a lot easier to stop overeating when you get your needs filled, that you were seeking to get them filled with food. Another way that this could show up that's a little bit sneaky, and this I've seen this happen more than once, is where women do not give themselves the permission to rest because they feel like they have to be up and doing. They don't give themselves permission to rest unless they aren't feeling well. And this probably occurred because growing up, they were taught that they must do and be productive and right get things done. And they had to be up and working unless they were sick. So then their brain associated, I don't get to rest and feel worthy doing it unless I feel sick. So if you find that you overeat to the point of feeling sick and then you rest because you're not feeling well, perhaps it's because your brain has associated feeling unwell with finally getting the need to rest filled. So sometimes our brain can be really sneaky in getting our human needs met. But once we're onto our brain, then we can leverage this knowledge to our benefit so that we don't need food to fill our needs anymore. We can solve for those. We can say if it was loneliness, then we can go out and find those connections that we actually need and solve for the loneliness. If it's rest that we need, we give ourselves permission to rest without guilt. We give ourselves that permission. All right, go out and try this. Thanks so much. If you'd like to join me for my next free workshop, you can go to the link that's in the description. Or if you want to join me for my 12-week FBF, Freedom with Body and Food program, the doors are open right now, but they're only open for a few days. The link is also in the description. It's carrienigar.com slash FBF. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.